Hey guys and welcome back to this brand new video. So today I'm going to show you how to set up and how to actually make the sound of your microphone better in voice meter. Now as you can hear right now I don't have any effects on my voice. The microphone just sounds like I took it out of the box. There's only a foam on my microphone and I have a pop filter. But more on that later on. So just keep in mind that throughout this video I will make my voice better and I'll show you how to in voice meter. But first guys if you want you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr. And here as you can see on my Fiverr you can get a logo or a banner or both for your YouTube channel if you want. But now back to the video. I do want to mention first as well that I have another video on my channel that explains how to download and install voice meter. So if you want to know how to get this software step by step that will explain it in the video on my channel. But without further ado, let's actually jump right into this video. So to actually start here, we're going to choose our input, which is going to be our microphone. Now in this case, you want to be sure that it's on WDM and then choose the name of your microphone. I actually have a Blue Yeti. So I'm just going to select this one here, the microphone. There you go. Now for the output, it's actually something else that I'll ask you to download in that video. It's actually going to be the virtual audio cable. In this case, you want to make sure it's on MME and then select cable input VB audio virtual C. You can actually use your speakers as well to hear yourself speak. If you actually have some speakers or headphone connected to your PC. And some microphones also have the option like mine to actually put the headphones in the microphone. So the Blue Yeti in this case and actually hear myself talk directly. But I don't really like that and while recording I don't really use that so I'm just going to go for the uh, so I'm just going to go here for the virtual output. So the first thing that's actually really important is to get a good gain. So that's going to be right here. I generally have it at 1.9 minus 1.9 dB. But if you can see here it will get quieter and quieter as I go here. So as you can see my my voice will get more and more away. It will get quieter. So make sure it's not too quiet either. And uh, same thing um Make sure it's not too loud either. I'm not going to put it too loud. There you go. But as you can see, it's already turning red, meaning that it's actually too loud. Um, but I won't go too loud for you guys' ears, obviously. So here you have minus 1.9, what I usually do. Then the second channel and the third channel we're not going to use. So we're going to put these on mute. Then these two you can put to stereo repeat. And so as I said earlier, it is important to actually have um, some things that go with your microphone, for example. But I do advise you to use a pop filter. That's very important. I have a foam around, but that's optional. The foam is really to make my voice slightly warmer. It's it's barely noticeable, but I like the difference. But the most important thing really for you is going to be to use a pop filter, because that's actually going to remove the p in your uh, recordings when they get out of hand. So, so that's really the basics right there to actually have a pop filter on your microphone. But now what I was actually going to do is actually do the main thing that's going to change our voice here in voice meter. So as you can see here, I'm around the middle parts and the mids here. But if I go up, you can see um, <laughs> this is echo, so we, we don't want that. We don't want this uh, too much. It's too much in the highs, too much treble. What we actually want is to be in the lows here. Well, not too much here, because you can see I already have a low voice. This is way too low. So I generally, uh, you can put it around here. It is around, um, I believe it's around here. I usually have it around here, I believe. So that's really, as you can see, the main thing that's going to change the voice and voice meter. It's a panel. You could see it as an EQ. It's not the most detailed form of equalizer, but what you basically want often is a little boost in the in the lows you don't have to but i always like to have a little boost in the lows even though i have a low voice as i said it's always nice to have a little boost in the lows in the mids you can or cut some in the mids so in the middle here or you can add some that depends that really depends on your voice this once again this is really something that is personal to you to your voice so you have to check for yourself what works best for you and your voice importance actually in the highs as well that, that you always have something in the highs some kind of clarity in your voice that's also really important. To clarity enough, you can always move this to this side here, put it more around the middle or a little more up here. Depends. You can once again just test it for yourself with your own voice. And still two very important things. One is the distance from the microphone. So generally you want to be between one and two fingers away from your microphone. This also depends on your microphone and how high the gain is of course as well. If you go too close to your microphone, then it's going to sound too boominous. So if you, I go really close right now, it will be way too boominous. There will be way too much boominess in your voice. And if I go further away right now, as you can hear, it sounds, uh, it sounds really bad. You can actually hear the room. So you don't want that. And once again, it depends on your microphone. Don't go too close uh, and don't go too far. You just have to find like a middle point. You could actually just take off your headphone on, on one ear and just listen to your voice while you're speaking in real life and to your voice in the software at the same time. And so if one headphone in your ear in the software, you can hear that your voice is too low. You have to go back a bit. And if you sound that it's too far away to watch the room, then you have to go a bit closer. But as I said, you can do that with one headphone in your ear. And in the other ear, you just hear your own voice in real life. And then you make sure that in the software and in real life, they sound the same approximately. And then you'll know the good distance from your microphone. And also talking about room, this is not something I hear too much other people talk about, but it's very important. And actually a lot of YouTubers have, but never really mention it, is the acoustics of a recording. 
So depends on what room you are and what space you are. If for example you're in a room that is not really good treated, like mine, mine is not the best, I have the walls. You can actually hear that the reverberations actually go off my wall, you can hear it. Uh, you can hear it actually pretty well. Still, I'm pretty close to my microphone, but I can hear it, I and mean, you probably can too. Behind, from behind me is also, because this is on cardioid, by the way, if you have a Blue Yeti or any other microphone, be sure it's on cardioid. That basically means that the sound is coming from the front, and pretty much what's on the sides and to the back, it pretty much damps or ignores the sound and then mostly focuses on the on the front. But what you could do if you are in your room and you want to have better recordings, you can put something like clothes to the side, you know, even long sleeves, pullovers, or something behind you like a tripod with a blanket. And you could record in the closet, but it doesn't need to be too small, because if the space where you're recording in is too small, the sound will be boxed, the sound of your voice will be boxed or whatever other recording you're doing, it will sound box, so you don't want that. Well, you wanna have some space to record your voice in. If it's just your room once again, you could consider putting things against the wall. You don't have to go and buy the acoustics, which is of course better, but you don't have to. As I said, you can also just put a tripod and put a blanket to your side behind you or something to hang your clothes on to the side. So that kind of forms like a nice isolation around you. It's optional, but you will see that your voice and your recordings get way better. It makes a huge difference from recording into an open room to an actual treated room so that's really important because a badly recorded recording is very hard to pretty much impossible to make better in any software so keep that in mind that it's really important that the the two recording conditions are quite good but anyway i just wanted to mention that two very important details that a lot of people tend to overlook but that also play a big role in making your voice sound better but in any case guys that was it for this video once again you can also check that other video on my channel how to actually download and install voice meter if you're actually not sure about something hey guys i wanted to say thank you guys for watching this video please leave a like would be really nice subscribe would also be really nice and i hope to see you guys in my next video bye